Hi there and welcome to the 28th row of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts and today is going to be a toughie. We're going back to the row where it was 15 minutes at 20 strokes a minute, nice and easy, 10 minutes at 24 strokes a minute, oh it's getting a bit tough, and then 5 minutes at 28 strokes a minute, oh no I'm going to have to lie on the floor. Um, yeah, so uh, it's all about increasing through the pace, okay so that first 15 minutes at 20 strokes a minute, right about 2k plus 18 pace, which is that 5 out of 10 walking up a flight of stairs kind of intense. Intensity. And then you take it up to uh, a good kind of six seconds, five, six seconds faster for those 24 strokes a minute. Um, and then for the final 28 strokes a minute, I want you to be a good kind of like six, seven seconds faster again. So this really is going to kind of run it out of you. It's going to be a tough workout. It's going to be the proper max top intensity workout, but you're going to feel amazing for it by the end. Trust me. Okay. So we're going to get into a four minute warm up. That should still be enough because of that big long lead in at the 15 minutes and 20 strokes a minute. So, but of course you want to warm up more, please do, but I'm going to do a four minute warm up. Now we have to set up our machine first. We always set up our machine. So on a concept two, that means heading to the front and setting your drag factor. Now if you don't know where to set the drag factor, just set the lever between four or five for the time being, okay? Because too low isn't a problem. Too high, when you have to really heave against the, the machine, that's when it is a problem. And then when you're done, please check out the video I have on here about drag factor. You can learn a bit more about it. Now if you're on a non-concept two, just set your resistance so that you get a nice feel from the stroke, but again, you don't have to heave and tug against the machine to get it moving. Next up, for your monitor, if you're able to, please set it to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down both of which will mess with your posture and finally please if you're able to set your foot stretcher height so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically okay if you're set too high then it gets a little bit tricky to get there if you're set too low then you can go way past that vertical position the straps kind of bind into your toes and it's just not good lose a little bit of power potential for injury okay so, we're going to do a four minute warm up, right about 20 strokes a minute, and I want you to do this right about the amount of power it would be as if you're standing up from a squat with no weight, okay? Because we're just going to work on the push from your feet and your hands connecting the handle to the machine for the first minute, then we'll start to increase. So, here we go in three, two, one, let's go. So, you get the power into the machine from your legs. If you've always thought of rowing as being a pulling sport, that it's all about upper body, it's not. It's about that push from the legs. But you need to connect that push to your hands to get it into the machine, obviously. And that's what the timing is about. So you push with your legs at the same time your hands make the handle connect to your machine. And if you can have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms, as you do that push, that power floods into the machine from your legs and then you can swing over your back and pull in your arms at the back of the stroke to add in power rather than it being all about just a pull. And hopefully that timing, you got it right so you can start to add a little bit more power from your legs not too much still a warm-up and so I just want you to be round about that 5 out of 10 intensity so you're going to be getting slightly out of breath heart rate will be increasing like you are climbing a constant flight of stairs but importantly this shouldn't feel like hard work you should just kind of go, okay, I'm working. I know I'm working, but I could easily do this for a while. As long as you've got the fitness, you should really be able to do this for like an hour easy if you've got rowing fitness. If you don't yet, then 10 minutes is fine. Okay, two more strokes. One more. Let's put one foot on the ground. So unstrap, put one foot on the ground, continue rowing. Don't worry if you start rolling like this and it does, if you're like new to rowing and you get tired quick, it's fine. You just maybe haven't built the fitness up yet. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. When I started rowing, I could, I do like five minutes and be exhausted. So it takes a while to build up fitness at any intensity. Change legs. So even if 
you've got that intensity right where it's like walking up a flight of stairs but actually you're completely gassed after five minutes ten minutes it's fine just keep going keep building up your fitness and you'll find that after a few sessions your fitness will just exponentially grow you'll just get be able to row for longer and faster if you wish okay both feet back in tighten those straps legs straight then roll with your back and arms so you swing over your hips then you pull in your arms then push out your arms and then rock back over your hips again so swing pull push rock swing pull push rock you're kind of rocking both way around but I want to kind of differentiate that swing as you connect right let's roll to the front of the machine with straight arms and a forward tilt and just press out from the front you don't have to be too forceful here because I just want you to work on holding this position of the straight arms and the forward tilt don't want you to push so hard that you end up recoiling okay so hold this position as you press work on the timing between your leg press and your hands connecting to the machine let's do one more Ooh. right like I say because we start this main row 15 minutes at pretty much the intensity you finish that warm up or that uh, before we start doing the single leg drill stuff then that 15 minutes will happily make you warm enough and then the next 10 minutes will get you a little bit warm and, and trust me the last five minutes if you go fast enough you'll be rather warm <laughs> so um so yeah but if you want to carry on warming up before starting please it's up to you pause the video do it so um i'm gonna do what i've been doing all the time so far i'm gonna rerun the video from 2021 and then i will join you in half an hour for the cool down and some stretching so enjoy your half hour row it really is a fun one when I recorded this one in 2021, I wrote it live on the software RowPro. So get ready for a rather odd intro. Okay, so 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 to start for 15 minutes. Uh, this has been a little bit of a failure this morning due to my technology crashing out on me. But hey, I'm preparing to race. Sit ready. Attention, go. Okay, so it doesn't matter that I'm doing this on my own and that I'm not actually racing anybody. I think what's happened is that my internet seemed to die on me and quite generously, Sam has just set up a single row for me to do on my own. You know what? That doesn't matter. I always row on my own. And I figure that you folks will come along, check out this video at a later date. So, right. We don't have to worry about talking about our grace and what you can see on screen. Because all you can see on screen is me. The downside, of course, is that all we get is the on-screen live Our Grace info. So when it comes to repackaging this as part of the main 30 days of 30 minutes workouts, you're not going to get to see my metrics, like my stroke rate and pace which, you know, at first when I started making these videos, I didn't think anyone would care about, and I didn't want it to be about me, but certainly putting stroke rate on screen, in case you forget, <laughs> is helpful. Right. Sorry, I'm wittering away that flustered start to today's row. It's got me a little bit off kilter. So, let's get back into professional mode and talk about what we're doing today. So we're doing the first 15 minutes at 20 strokes a minute and 
2K plus 18 pace, which is a really nice start to the row. Gets you properly warmed up if you had to rush a warm up like I did. So that when we hit the 24 strokes a minute section, you'll be nice and loose and able to just push harder with the legs in order to increase your stroke rate and pace. But that's not to skip over this first 15 minutes though. 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 pace is, you know, it's like turning on the TV and there's an episode of Friends playing. It's so familiar. You know exactly what's going to happen because you've been there before so many times. But it's still very enjoyable and gets you into a nice <laughs> entertained state I think my, my analogy is running out of steam now <laughs> I've heard it I think it was Karen or Crystal described it about a year ago as these 20 strokes, 2K plus 18 rows, like that reliable friend that you go out with on a Friday or Saturday night. The one that will make sure you get home safe and sound. They may not be the ones dancing on the tables, but they're the ones looking out for you. And that's what these slower stroke rate, lower intensity rows are doing. They're looking out for you. They're giving you the chance to build up that foundation fitness. And by slowing it down, you can spend a little bit more of a focus on your technique too. And you know what I'm like when it comes to technique. What do you mean bore? That's rude. <laughs> Hopefully not. I think the thing about technique is that it's really easy to develop bad habits that you can spend time working on your stroke but then it just takes a couple of sessions for you to do something just a little bit weird and then suddenly that becomes your default habit stroke because it's just how you feel it should be done and you've kind of ground it into your subconscious as your new stroke but the good news is you can undo it it just takes a bit of time and concentration with concentration being the big key thing there it's like I've got well there's loads of things I need to work on on my stroke but my three focuses right now are the strange 
over lean that I'll tend to do at the front of the machine where I'll get myself nicely set up I'll be in the right forward lean arms straight but then right as I get into the catch I'll suddenly go down a little bit more come up down and so I'm trying to I'm trying to stop that because what that causes is a small butt scoot where my backside starts moving from underneath me before I connect my legs and push them into the machine and so that's potential leg power that I'm missing but also it's messing with that hang off the handle where you get into the right angle push your feet into the machine and because you've got straight arms and that forward lean you hang off the handle in order for the power to get in there rather than it feeling like you're pulling on the handle so that's the thing at the front if you feel that you're grabbing and you're pulling the handle back rather than just letting the force flow in from your legs then not only are you missing that hang to get the leg power in not only are you risking potential tennis elbow or golfer's elbow or even just strained biceps and forearms but you're also missing out on that good finish at the back of the stroke if you've already used up half of your arm pull at the front then you don't get that proper powerful finish elbows through your sides squeezing a can between your shoulder blades and the reason that I think that's really important is that the strong finish at the back as your elbows go through even if you have a small flare out of your elbows rather than uh, chicken wings where you come out if you do that then what I'm about to say doesn't count <laughs> if you get your elbows through with a slight flare out of your elbows there's a natural spring rebound created by your rib cage and the muscles and ligaments through your body that want to send your arms forwards again and the real trick to the recovery section of your row is getting your arms away nice and rhythmically a good flow so you're not 
coming back and then throwing them rigid like that no 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 you want to be pulling in and then releasing in the same rhythm the same pace so in out in out and that arms away triggers the forward lean back over your hips so that by the time your hands are past your knees you should be in the perfect body angle with straight arms and therefore don't need to do anything else in terms of arms or back tilt which like I said is one of my big issues so do as I, <laughs> do as I say not as I do but that hands away fluid movement and the rock over your hips without needing to tug your feet against the foot straps is a big factor in how you increase your stroke rate or how you're able to row at higher rates which is quite apt as being in just over 30 seconds we're going to increase to 24s and we're also going 6 seconds faster so this really does require a big push from your legs a big increase in power you ready? in 2 1 here we go 24s so just push those legs harder keep your body angle leaning forwards as you come into the front arms straight and then just push harder with the legs and what you should find is that the hang off the handle will just feel like there's a little bit more tension to it and because there's that added tension it means that as you come in to that finish with your handle in to sternum height you're finishing just that little bit more powerfully and faster and remember I said you want to mirror the pace that you pull in at with the pace you put your arms back out at so a faster finish means a slightly faster recovery and when you combine the two the faster or more powerful leg drive gives you a faster drive speed in the stroke <laughs> and so when you combine a slightly faster drive speed and a slightly faster recovery that's how your stroke rate 
increases so it's about both halves of the stroke it's not about a drive speed at the same pace and then faster recovery nor is it about a much faster drive and the same recovery both sides get faster I've spoken before about the two to one ratio at these kind of rates where your drive speed is twice as fast as your recovery and that's important because what it means is that two thirds of the time you're just recovering it's only a third of the time that you're actually putting in considerable effort and then it becomes about how you do that recovery to minimize any extra energy that you might be wasting so the arms away and the tilt over your hips creates the momentum to bring you forwards so that once your hands are past your knees all you have to do is bend your knees to recover I'm not yanking my feet against the foot straps to do so there's an element for me anyway as I get to 24 and above where kind of subconsciously at the back of the stroke I'll lift my toes slightly against the foot strap to stop myself flying off the back but it's more of a bad habit than it is me actually bracing against the straps ideally when you get to the back of the stroke point your toes towards the front of the machine and that will then stop your feet flicking against the foot straps and it'll also mean that you're putting in the full leg drive as it's hard to point your toes to the front if your legs aren't all the way down Ooh. okay where are we we have three minutes to go on this 24 strokes a minute interval intensity wise this will probably be seven 
or eight out of 10 on the effort scale, you should be comfortable, but also feeling that you have to concentrate on getting the power in in order to hold 2k plus 12 pace so we started off the row in that bottom intensity <coughs> row now we've definitely climbed <coughs> into that mid intensity and then in a minute and a half as we <coughs> crank the pace up again you will start to climb towards that top max intensity and I, I'll put my cards on the table now and say I'll have a choice between talking or holding pace so let's see how I feel <coughs> all right 30 seconds 12 strokes this five minutes will be over in a flash 140 strokes is all it'll take all right here we go in three two one up to 28 and 2k plus five or faster remember it's about a bigger push from your legs in order to get pace and stroke rate up there and then as you go through this you may find fatigue clawing at you so that's when it's an idea to concentrate on technique your body positions that swing over your back the fast return of the handle in reflection of the fast finish three minutes <sighs> posture to <clears throat> try not to slump 
in search of more power you'll lose power and fitness if you do that come on two minutes to go this should feel tough but achievable you will be at a good 9 or 10 on the effort scale but with less than 90 seconds to go the end is in sight and you should be okay to finish here we go last minute have you got anything more from your legs keep your stroke rate at 28 but push harder with your feet 30 can you get to 2k pace for the last 10 seconds or better two more last one oh. ah. it's times like that that this is the downside of rowing these live because I'd quite like to lie on the ground right now and recover well I don't know about you but I think I need a bit of a wee lie down after, after that I mean it's great it's it's it is an amazing row but wow just that last five minutes but again because it's only five minutes and it kind of takes you run about, run about a minute for the uh, pressure the intensity to bite and then you've got like four minutes left and you're like I can easily do four minutes so it's not that it's unachievable but oh man it's tough so shall we get into a two minute cool down let's do hopefully you've had a drink and you've had a chance to just reseat your backside oh here we go right so we're going to do this uh, around about 20 strokes a minute, round about your warm-up pace, and then just kind of gradually ease off. Okay, right, come on, posture, John. Don't slump. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Ah. And in fact, that's one of the big reasons to do a cool down is towards ends of like tough rows like we just did. It's quite easy for things to break apart. You start to fatigue and maybe posture starts to just creak a little bit or maybe you start pulling with the arms rather than pushing with the legs as your legs get tired it happens and one of the reasons that you do so many or I suggest anyway that you do so many of these kind of long low intensity rows is to try and drive in a kind of a core technique a muscle memory so that even when you're tired and fatigued your body knows what to be doing but it still can fall apart and so spending two minutes after a tough row 
just trying to think about best practices for your stroke really is valuable your brain remembers that this is how to row gives your body a chance to properly ease off because you're back to using like 85 90% of your muscles when you have a something close to the right technique so just really do think about that forward lean arm straight push with the legs strong finish with a good posture nice core or oh, well <laughs> I'm not saying you must have a six pack not that kind of nice I mean a powerful core braced core right has to be done with the two minute cool down you don't have to stop you can carry on cooling down and watch me do some stretching <laughs> um, if you don't have time to stretch please take a moment to stretch your quads hamstrings and possibly glutes it really is important that you kind of give them a chance to go oh we need to stretch okay but don't do it in the shower because I don't want you to slip and fall over or you can join Stretchy John who's about to take you or who is taking you through uh, stretching if you have access to a mat somewhere or I will take you through how to do the same stretches or similar stretches on the machine if you don't have space so put your feet back on the foot straps keep the straps loose so you can brace your feet back against them slightly and then get your backside comfortable hands on the air legs straight fold forwards and it's as simple as that okay don't have to do anything else you're not pulling in your ankles you're not doing anything weird with your knees you're not bouncing your upper body or anything you're just folding forwards into a point where you feel that stretch and then just hang out here for a while okay just it's all you have to do and you you might feel as you go through this stretch that your muscles that your hamstrings start to kind of ease off and as they stretch it's like that the stretch isn't quite as strong as it was at first at which point you can just ease forwards just a little bit um, but I don't recommend like I say really avoid grabbing onto your ankles and pulling yourself forwards or going to your toes and pulling yourself forwards because that therein lies injury twanging hamstrings and things so do as much as you can control and still feel the stretch right let's move on to glutes next so one foot up in the rail the other foot comes over so that your heel goes into the crook of your knee bring this knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face your knee and your foot hold that knee, knee in the position in the position in that position hold on to the back of the machine for stability and rotate okay i like the word rotate uh if only for uh in well you, you may know this you may not know this but in uh planes when you're flying the point when you take off when you, you get up to like the takeoff speed then as you kind of pull back on the the yoke or whatever is that the, your plane has they say rotate and it's like it's, it, like sometimes it's the computer that tells you to do it so you get this little computer voice going rotate or it's just the pilot that says it but i just think there's something about the word rotate uh, i do think i just swap legs um i think i may have said this before in a in a video but if i was able to really build a way back time machine there's a few things i'd do <laughs> like i'd wear earplugs i'd look after my teeth i'd probably avoid a couple of people that i've met through my life but i think i'd probably be a pilot i'd probably, I'd probably have tried to join the iraf and been a pilot if i knew then what i know now of course and obviously back then i still just wanted to be the drummer for van halen so um and weirdly they had a drummer called Alex Van Halen and they were unlikely to fire him for me <laughs> and that's not even taken into account for the fact that I'm nowhere near good as drummer as he is all right let's do quads next uh, you can hold on to the monitor if you wish for stability flick your leg up so that your heel touches your backside and then put just a nice gentle pull onto the upper part the kind of bridge of your foot to create that kind of that tension that pull that stretch that then goes down into your quads you should feel that zing that stretchy feel as you pull if you feel it too high up up in the hip flexor then your posture is a little bit off if your knees hurt then well if your knees hurt doing the stretch then oh crikey hardly ever fall to the left in this one <laughs> if your knees hurt then i kind of recommend maybe not doing this stretch for your oh crikey th third time's a charm there we go um just swap legs for podcast people um, took me a few attempts um, yeah if your knees hurt doing this stretch then obviously basically if anything hurts when doing any stretches find a different stretch 
And ooh, I'm trying not to fall over to the left again. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you, any part of you hurts when doing a stretch, find a different way to stretch your, that particular muscle, okay? Because you don't want to be doing this one and you can feel, because it's quite easy on this stretch to feel that part right in front of your knee. If you have problems there, it can be a little bit sore. So if it is, don't do that stretch. Okay, let's do hip flexors next. One knee on the ground, the other foot is in front of it. Your back toes are, are on the ground, so your heels up in the air. Your knee in the front one is above your foot. Ta-da! Uh, so your 90 degree angles either side. I'm still falling over, crikey. Maybe I'm drunk. I don't think I am, but... <laughs> okay, so uh, look straight forward with a good posture, and then just push that hip forwards so you kind of, your, your body will sink down a bit. Okay, and it's, you, want, you want to make sure that as you do it, you feel your body sink down. If you're not sinking down, you're not putting that push forwards. If you feel like you're completely falling over, rolling over, then it's because you're doing that from the lower back or upper back. Sorry, that was a, I just hiccuped halfway through, halfway through saying back. Um, I had a massive gulp of my sports drink after finishing that. Uh, and so, yeah. Did I? No, I didn't. Why have I got hiccups? Why can't I taste? Maybe it was the big gulp I had before starting that. Crikey. He's <laughs> coming back to visit me. <laughs> <laughs> like the like the ghost of Christmas past, my sports drink is uh, poor Tiny Tim. The Tiny Tim? No, ah, oh, that, that's completely gone in my head. Anyway, uh, here we go. Say other leg. Sorry, do the same thing. It's Tiny Tim that's in Christmas Carol, isn't it? Sorry, I know this has gone absolutely silent while I'm thinking about this. Tiny Tim. <laughs> okay. Uh, the hashtag can be whoever it is I'm thinking of. So if it is Tiny Tim, uh, please use the hashtag Tiny Tim as a reply to, um, uh, uh, if you're going to make any comment on this video. Is it Tiny Tim? Oh, crikey. Well, I'm going to move on. I know it's not Tiger Tim. Tiger Tim was a DJ on Radio Clyde when I was like 15. So it's not him. Tiny Tim. It is Tiny Tim. Oh, crikey. Well, I'm going to shop and I'm going to say, how many times can one person say Tiny Tim in a one minute stretch? Right. Let's do shoulders next. So, whatcha? Put your hand straight out in front of you and then whatcha? Put it across your body and then use your other arm to just give it that nice little nudge, okay? You get what I mean by nudge here, don't you? That you just pull it back against you. Um, and just kind of puts in that little bit of force, that little bit of stretch across your delts. You don't want it to be, again, with every stretch, you don't want it to actually be sore. You want, that's why I describe it as a zing. It's like a warmth almost um, that, uh, it's almost like when you're working out and you get that lactic acid feel, that first burn, that initial, oh, I'm working out today. That's kind of what a stretch should feel like. If it feels sore, you're not doing it right. Um, so you might want to, if, you, if you're doing something and it, it feels sore and you think you're not doing it right, look around elsewhere on the internet and find alternate stretches, okay? So for like the shoulder one, look at a different way to stretch your shoulders and things, and then look at other people doing it. Because this is, like I say, this is how I do it. This is how my body reacts best for stretching these various mu muscle groups. We all have different bodies, okay? So this may not be the best way for you to stretch. Oh, where are we? Uh, oh, I've not done forearms. I'll do forearms side on. I don't think I ever do this. So put your hands right in front of your face, and then pushing them together, bring them down in front of your body. Okay, so uh, my thumbs are touching my heart rate uh, sensor. My forearms are run right a bit parallel to the floor. Um, my left shoulder's up in the air, so it doesn't help. Uh, and fingers are at 90 degree angles to my forearms. And this is giving me a nice little stretch um, through my wrists, my forearms, and my fingers as well because of that kind of pushing together. Okay, so today's row, um, I, can, I think, at times I maybe felt in my forearms, but because it's all about stroke rate, there was never there was never really a point where when I was overpowering the stroke, it tends to be that my forearms start to get a little bit crampy feeling if I'm putting in more power. So whereas I was doing that 28 strokes a minute, around about 2K plus five, if I was aiming for 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus two or even 2K pace, and I'm putting a bit more of a pull as I come into the finish, that's when my forearms start to get a little bit sensitive. Let's do uh, biceps next. So hands behind you as though you're flying a Red Bull um, wingsuit, Whee! but then rotate your thumbs outwards, okay? And then that lengthens the long head of your bicep. And if you have a good posture, and you're kind of, you're giving a good, you're flying properly, you should feel that your upper chest kind of opens out a little bit. It'll help your pecs and just kind of maybe open up your rib cage. I don't know what it'd be like. Is it gonna help your intercostal muscles? I don't think it's really gonna do anything to your intercostals. Let's check. 
No, nothing. What about triceps? Well, triceps put in a little bit of a stretch. So put your arms up in the or one arm in the air, up in the air. Bring it down your back so it touches your spine. Your elbow will be pointing up in the air. I can tell I've got a really tight tricep today because of the angle that it's going out at. So I'm going to use my other arm to just help it um, point straight up to the sky. And then that's all it takes for me to get a really nice stretch into that tricep, especially because I could tell um, because of the angle to the side it was coming out that it really was rather tight. So, because um, I was doing, I was doing more burpee broad jumps today. Oh. Actually, I mean, apart from the fact they're really tiring, I do enjoy them. There's something quite nice about a burpee broad jump, but um, because they're kind of coming back up, it's, it's like a, a, well, it is a press up basically. So do enough of them and triceps hurt. So change your arms, or at least, sorry, not hurt. Triceps get quite a lot of use. So I find after doing them, even like a couple of hours afterwards, I've got quite tight, tight triceps. Maybe I'm not actually stretching enough after I do the high rocks training. Um, I tend to kind of, <laughs> kind of just do a quick, uh, I know I'm going to be rowing later, so I'll just, I'll rely on the rowing stretching, so. And it does, it, it works, but it means that I was a little bit tight today. There we go, I'm all done with my stretching, um, and I managed to squeeze in the high rocks reference. Haha, <laughs> see, I bet you didn't even, I bet you were like, when's he going to mention it? But yeah. Uh, so yeah, there we go, uh, I've already given the hashtag, uh, who's, the, who's the, the little boy on crutches in the Christmas Carol? Is it Tiny Tim? I think it is. But yeah. So thank you very much for joining me on day 28 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. We've only got two more to go after this and then that's us done for the 2022 series and then we'll get into the Christmas rows. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. It is a fantastic row. It's a great one to come to if you want a little mix of everything. Kind of the, this, the last seven rows, of the, yeah, last seven rows of this series really are worth just bookmarking and coming back to time and time again because these are just epic rows for or at least that's how I see them I know how far up my own self am I but yeah these seven are just great and you can just kind of pick and choose and go oh, I want to do that kind of a row and it just gives you everything you want in my opinion okay so thank you so much for doing this one with me I hope I will see or you will see me or one of us will see one of us in another video whether it's the continuing saga of the 30 days of 30 minute rows or whether it's one of my other videos I don't know but you'll find out so I will um, I will let you see me that sounds more <laughs> that sounds weird but um, until you see me in another video or I hear from you in a YouTube comment or a Twitter comment or something please look after yourselves take care be well bye-bye